So our next guest is a man so dangerous, so dangerous that New Zealand police conspired with the Australian government and immigration officials to stop him coming to New Zealand. But he went and got some lawyers and said, oh, it's not fair. And I reckon Jacinda Ardern, who was then the Prime Minister, might have had a hand in that. And suddenly he was allowed in, um, which really upset the people at the Herald who had basically pimped on him in the old parlance. Uh, but he's back. He's back in New Zealand. Um, and he's making, we understand, and you would have heard, guys, that there are two documentaries being made about Jacinda Ardern, Be Still My Beating Heart, Um but he's making a documentary about, strangely enough, a, a group that have been in the programme this morning, uh, Destiny Church and, and Brian Tamaki. So a very warm welcome by video link from Auckland to Avi Yemeni. Avi, good to see you again, mate. Good to be here. Thanks for having me again, mate. All How right. Now, I just want to clear up, people, you come through immigration, no problems with the visa, you don't have the thought police or the Nazis oh. marching you off. No, but it is interesting because I, it is this country for me to get into because when I get to the check-in at Qantas, the screen always does something that leaves the uh, a check-in chick stunned and I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. I've got this piece of paper. Take a look at this. She goes, oh, yeah, I've got a call through. And then they talk to me and it's all okay. They ask me what I'm coming to do. So it's still um, it's still a, it's still there, but it's um, it's it's all kosher. They, they, they've let me in. All right. Avi, I've been watching your stuff and Rebel News seems to be going from strength to strength in Australia and around the world. I've been watching your stuff in particular to relation to the new global woke trend, which is waving a Palestinian flag and chanting from the river to the sea and claiming a genocide. And it's happening all over the world. In New Zealand, actually, I always feel we kind of have people who do it but we're not really serious about it. We're not like up there with Australia, Canada and Britain where these protests have transmorphed into violence and really nasty anti-Semitism. Uh, is that the big trend in Australia at the moment amongst the wokesters is that you get down on Jews and you claim a genocide that isn't happening? Absolutely. you claim. In fact, it's, it, it, day by day the lie gets more and more bizarre, I don't know if you've heard the latest one, is that the Israeli army, it's in case you decide, or the apartheid, now they've got one where I still cannot believe so many people are falling for it, is that the Israeli army is training dogs to rape Palestinian prisoners. And, you know, they a lot of their posts, they'll say, read that again. And I do, I go back and I read it again and I'm thinking, are you really that foolish? But there are a lot of people, I call them the woke left, joined in on that and you've obviously got the Islamists for their own reasons who at the end of the day will eat both the woke left and woke right, but it is a, it's a, it's a growing problem around the world and certainly in Australia. All right. Um, Avi, as I said, I often look at New Zealand and think, geez, our culture wars... It's like a tiny little skirmish. We were like handbags at 10 paces because New Zealand is a quiet little backwater and we like it that way. Um, but you've come here to make a documentary um, about Brian Tamaki. What do you find so interesting about self-created Bishop Brian? Well, to be honest, Sean, if, I didn't know much about Brian except for what I'd seen through headlines over the last, few years, especially through COVID, I became more aware of him um, while I was watching what was happening across the ditch. Um, and I think when we came here last time, I was left a bit shocked at all this kind of work, especially this Man Up program he was running and the kind of following that he had and the believers that would do anything for him. And uh, I, I pitched the idea to my boss, Ezra, and I said, listen, I think here that the story really is, you know, Rebel, our tagline is telling the, the other side of the story. Yeah. I think there's there's, there's, an, um, there's so much in Brian and his, you might not love all of it, but there's certainly a lot that isn't being told, that's um, purposely left out. They omit the good parts. That When I say good parts, I'm talking about the parts that 
everybody would agree, anybody who's looking at it um, uh, fairly would agree are pretty amazing parts to both the Destiny Church and Brian, what he's managed to do here. So we've come here and we've had, we're halfway through filming and I can tell you now, um, I'm so glad I I made that choice and I pitched this idea because it is, it's, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be a great documentary. There is so much, it's even better than I imagined. All right, and this is being done without New Zealand taxpayers' money, unlike the Jacinda Ardern documentaries that are being made, where I'm sure some are sucking off the public tit one way or another. Avi, going back to your initial, I guess, um, problems with coming to New Zealand, did you ever receive an apology or any compensation from those curious events that led to you not being or being denied entry to New Zealand? No, <laughs> no, nothing. I'm just allowed in now. As if it never happened, um, we did have over the weekend the New, Ze New Zealand Herald trying once again without a byline to have me banned, but uh, this time I'm unsuccessful. And you were described as a no right apology. wing, as right or a far right sort of person. Far right, far right. Are you far yeah. right? Are it's we? interesting because the, far, the real far right hate me because I've got this thing called being Jewish and... Both them and I guess the far left, I imagine, is probably like whoever wrote that article and, and didn't put their name to it. Um, they probably share more in common than, than me in the far right. Mm. All right. Um, looking at New Zealand, do you think our change of government has changed our attitude or approach on issues? Is wokeism in in retreat do you in New Zealand what's the feeling uh, you get uh, coming back here I do get that I do get that I, I don't think it's huge as big as um, we, you'd like to see it but I, I think it is certainly um, that the wokeism is being pulled back and peeled back so there is still hope I think New Zealand is I always say that it's kind of ahead of the time Really, it's ahead of the whole world, but also look at New Zealand and uh, you can kind of see into the future when it comes to these issues. Um, I, I know before you mentioned uh, how New Zealand, I can't remember the exact words you used, but it's some little, you know... Backwater, little... ...non-issue yeah. for the world. But, yeah, but I, I, I'd argue, you know, Jacinda Ardern was the best example because Jacinda Ardern became the world mascot of wokeism. She's, in fact, still till today, and that's probably why they're working on these documentaries, mm. which, you know, you've given me an idea on a future documentary. But the reason why they're, they're, they're kind of upping the marketing on her is because she was such an important figure for worldwide woke, um, and they don't want that to get ruined with the truth. So um, I, I, I dare say in New Zealand is important obviously for you guys, but it is important for us in Australia. Sorry, I had never really...